everyone, and welcome. I'm Shivani Joshi. You know, leaders are increasingly facing the threat of cybersecurity today, all while trying to fill a talent gap needed to combat it. Joining me now to discuss the issue and the possible solutions to this problem is Nupur Davis. She's Comcast EVP and Chief Information Security and Product Privacy Officer, as well as Amit Verma. He's Comcast Business's Vice President of Solution Engineering and Technology. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Shivani. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. No problem. Nupur, this is a hot topic, and I want to start with you because it's being called the perfect storm due to so many factors. Walk us through the current picture that companies face out there, companies face out there, um, in regards to cybersecurity threats and the talent picture. Yeah, it is a perfect storm. And um, the, the, the reason is there's certain multiple things that are happening together and they're increasing the demand for cyber talent. Um, so first is just the rise in um, cyber attacks at all types of businesses, government, school, education, um, uh, industry, um, big companies, small companies, and the, the rise in things like ransomware, right, where um, cyber threat actors are threatening to shut down your business, your, your ability to deliver a service, whether you're a school or a business or a government agency. So, so the rise of ransomware, at the same time, there is more and more focus from uh, the government, from regulatory agencies, from policymakers about making sure that you're tightening down your cyber risks. So rise of things like ransomware, rise of regulations, these are all coming together, and companies that didn't used to think about cyber, um, you know, uh, city city halls, um, local governments, um, school districts that didn't used to think about this are suddenly now looking to go hire their own CISO and their own cyber security specialist. And so it is a perfect storm that is making the demand for this, uh, the demand for cyber talent just grow um, more than is, um, uh, the, there's just not enough supply for that demand right now. Yeah, it sounds like now everyone needs to be concerned about this. Amit, why is preparedness especially crucial right now, particularly for those organizations that might have overlooked it before? So, as Nupur said, the cyber attacks have been increasing, and what recently happened, the COVID pandemic also increased the complexity, right? Work from anywhere. Uh, in a, ma a matter of days, all the organizations had to move their employees to work remotely, and, and they had to take on digital transformation projects, which usually would have taken years to do. They had to do it in months, right? So what they overlooked on the security side to meet the um, acceleration of those, that has led to some gaps in the security in the applications which were rolled out in the last two years. And also the whole concept of walled gardens or uh, walled ha castles have disappeared. So that is causing challenges for the companies. And the, the new normal is work from anywhere and employees are still not willing to come back to work. So organizations have to increase their preparedness to handle the increased cybersecurity risks. You know, Nupur, all of this has left us with a talent gap. How can leaders strategize to close the gap? What are the hurdles and even the considerations they should make? Because you have these increased needs, but then you don't have enough people to deliver on this. Yes. Um, you know, one way is, of course, to outsource your um, uh, cyber needs, right? So, um, you know, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of products that you can buy. There are a lot of services that you can subscribe to. And, you know, uh, uh, anywhere from, you know, managed UTM to um, just um, uh, security incident response to um, security operation centers that, that manage services that you can just um, outsource this to, to somebody. And the other way is really to look for security talent in non-traditional um, areas and in non-traditional populations. So, um, you know, uh, cybersecurity, just like other technical fields um, and other, you know, uh, risk-related fields, um, has uh, 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 
representation issue, right? They're not enough women. They're not enough um, underrepresented minorities. Um, they are, sometimes we look for too much, um, you know, you have to have a college degree, you have to have, um, so, so we can start being more um, creative about um, where we look for cyber talent. Um, you know, be more open to people who are willing to learn and um, all the way from beginners, so, you know, people who are just starting, to people who may be returning to work, to people who may have left the workforce and are thinking about rejoining, right? So I think those two things. One is if you're a small business, if you're a medium-sized business, see if you can really outsource as much of this as possible. And second, if you are looking for talent, then don't just look for it in the traditional way, in the traditional populations, but be open to looking in places where you may not have traditionally looked. Creativity and widen the talent pool. Sounds like two options out there. Ahmed, anything to add there? Yeah, so I think the other option is breaking down the silos. So in a typical organization, there's three different silos. There's a network team, there's a security team, and then the IT infrastructure team. Um, break, uh, almost all of them have similar uh, background. So breaking down those silos and cross-training people will give you a much wider pool of uh, talent that can take on the security roles, in my opinion. And as Nooper said, managed security service providers are a great way to help uh, offset some of that gap. Nuper, anything else to add in terms of how technology can address this talent gap? Because we know that's also um, a huge advantage um, to growing um, access to technology as well. Yes, um, you know, there's always that that triangle that we talk about, right? There's people, there's process, and there's technology, and you need all three. So for talent, you know, we need the people. Um, to, you know, we can do a lot of automation, a lot of um, machine learning, a lot of AI, a lot of um, new tooling, a lot of um, just just what Amit said, right? Manage security services, for example. Um, you know, manage firewalls, manage UTM, manage um, DDoS, manage all of those things. All of those technologies reduce your reliance on your own people, but you still need your own people once you get to a certain size and once you're doing certain types of business. So you do need all of those three things, you know, good processes, good people, and then good tools and technology. I, mean, I want to bring out the fact that, you know, a lot of companies haven't focused very much on cybersecurity until the pandemic, until now. In your mind, how urgent is it to act on this growing threat of cybersecurity and what can businesses be doing now? I think uh, focusing on cybersecurity is very important. The cyber threats are not going to reduce. They are going to keep on increasing. Cybercrime is a very profitable enterprise. Say it's over $1.5 trillion business. So it's not going to reduce. Uh, companies need to invest in security. They need to in include CISOs in their decision-making process and increase the budget for security. Uh, in most cases, security organizations are usually considered an overhead and the budgets are difficult to justify. So increasing their budget, um, invest in tra training. So there's a talent shortage outside, but you, as I said, breaking down silos and in, uh, investing in training your IT staff to make them more capable to handle security needs. The other thing is uh, invest in automation uh, that can uh, also reduce the reliance on people. So Nooper, as we wrap things up, any action items that you'd recommend to businesses for dealing with the cybersecurity threat? Um, you know, cyber risk is the number one risk for most companies um, today big, small, medium size. So some of the things that we've talked about, you know, investing in people, investing in processes, investing in technology, making sure that you're using the resources that you already have, looking for resources in places that you may not have looked at in the past. I think doing all of that will help reduce that number one risk um, of cyber that is top of mind for most businesses today.